Ancient Giants of Ireland and Britain by Xavier Hayes in his book, Ancient Giants, History, Myth, and Scientific Evidence from Around the World. History, like love, is so apt to surround her heroes with an atmosphere of imaginary brightness. James Fenimore Cooper The giants of ancient Britain are spoken of in myths that stirred the imagination, conjuring up images once written about by the bards of the royal courts. The origin of these giants is unknown, although alternative scholars point to the antediluvian lands of Atlantis. One of the oldest poems in the English language, Seafair, is a first-person narrative, describing the hero Theodoric's escape in battle against twelve giants who guard Castle Nidra. The poet also reflects on a walled set of immense stone ruins that were built by giants and makes a reference to the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, a strange series of shaped rocks that make a pathway from Irish cliffs into the ocean. This stone bridge was attributed to the ancient Irish giant Finn McCool but modern academia claims it's nothing more than natural geologic basalt columns molded uniquely over time by Mother Nature. By looking at the reported histories of the late 18th and 19th centuries, we can find a plethora of articles and newspaper mentions of giants being dug up all over the British and Irish landscapes. Like the mounds brimming with giant Indians found by the settlers of America as they moved west, the mounds in Ireland and England also revealed giant skeletons, dug up by eager farmers looking to reappraise their land. The 12-foot fossilized giant was discovered by miners in County Antrim, Ireland. The Irish prospectors digging for iron ore were at a loss for words, as they tried to figure out a way to bring the petrified giant to the surface. With the help of a crane, they were able to raise the 400-pound giant and get him on the train to Dublin for a proper evaluation. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. In December 1895, the Strand magazine ran a picture of this fossilized giant taken at the London Rail Depot. It would be the last time the public ever saw the giant, as the story disappeared almost as quickly as it appeared. From the article we learn that the giant had six toes and had previously been exhibited in Dublin, Liverpool, and Manchester for six pence a head. A legal dispute brought it to London, where it vanished from record. The fact that it was exhibited around various cities caused people to believe it might have been a hoax, and it might have been. The Cardiff giant was exhibited around the same time and looks slightly similar to the Irish giant, even though they were discovered in different places. We do know that the Cardiff giant was indeed a hoax, admitted so by its creator, and, although there is not enough proof to claim that the Irish giant was also a hoax, to the unconvinced, it's seen as an obvious act of tomfoolery. But in 1994, a community of Saxon giants was discovered by prominent archaeologist Anne Finney in North Yorkshire. The skeletons were excavated from a 6th century Saxon cemetery, found hidden beneath the ruins of Thirst Castle. One of the skeletons was that of a man more than seven feet in height. Worried about the possible ramifications of her discovery, Finney kept the artifacts hidden away in secret vaults, they were only seen by fellow academics. She even tried to halt the artifacts from being put on display by the impatient owners who kept wondering what the hell the big deal was. Cooper Harding, curator at Thirsk Museum, which houses the artifacts, says, you can imagine the terror of the native Celtic farmers, who were quite short, when confronted by these giants. The Thirsk Museum had to lobby the Yorkshire Archaeological Trust endlessly for over five years, before they were finally given the artifacts back, so that they could put them on public display. However, in a strange twist of fate, the bones of the giant Saxon still remain hidden away from the public and private vaults, while the people are left to marvel at the less mysterious copper brooches and 6th century Saxon jewelry instead. If 7-foot giants are kept hidden, it begs the question of how many 9, 10 and 12-foot giants are stored in vaults, in hidden corners of the halls of so-called academia. 
Of course, the usual excuse not to display giant bones runs along the familiar lines of respecting the remains of the dead, as if they have any respect for the still living. But they have no problem displaying the bones of Neanderthals and the alleged ape men fossils, which they claim we evolved from millions of years ago. But no love on the same pedestal for the giant bones. I guess these bones are too damaging to their theories. Even though they admit there's a missing link, they go out of their way to suppress a possible connection in the bones of ancient giants. It makes you take a closer look at the myths of ancient Britain. One of the earliest legends includes the world's most famous wizard, Merlin, the mystical ruins of Stonehenge, and of course ancient giants. In the 1100s, the first known depiction of Stonehenge appeared in the medieval history textbook, Brut. The sketched image shows the legendary Merlin constructing Stonehenge with the help of giants. Ancient legends claim that Stonehenge was built by Merlin, who moved stones from Arran all the way to Salisbury with the help of his magical wand. Once there, both a race of giants and his wand helped in creating the megalithic solar observatory. Stonehenge has been a mind freak, at least since it was first written about. Since the ruins have no known beginning, only time knows how many ancient kingdoms they've seen rise and fall. Academia admits Stonehenge could be as much as 5,000 years old, and that the complex is situated along lee lines of the Earth's energy grid. In 1825, farmers discovered the bones of a seven-foot-tall person near the ruins of Stonehenge, while digging to expand a barn in Humbleton. But who were these seven-footers? Were they diminished survivors of that once mighty race of giants? Some historians claim these were either the Phoenicians or Hittites, or perhaps even the distant relatives of the Mur and Mardu clans, representing the the Amorite giants of the Old Testament and the Torah. These were the giants of modern-day Syria, Libya, and Palestine, known as the Sons of Anak, whose name comes from the Akkadian word for tin or tarnish, implying that the Anak had serious riches, and they did. They were the ones that supplied the gold for King Solomon's temples. Where they got this gold remains a mystery, but since the Phoenicians were renowned for their seafaring mastery, possible guesses range from Wales to Australia, and even as far away as the ancient gold mines in northern Arizona. Despite being a once mighty force, it is doubtful Phoenicians had any hand in building Stonehenge, unless it was done by their 12-foot-tall Anak ancestors. Before I end this video, Let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this. They have done a lot for us all. And thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.